Hi everyone, today we're going to take a look at more settings you may have missed in your Olympus camera. Now these might be settings that are kind of buried deep into the menu system, or maybe there's only a passing mention in the owner's manual, if any, or maybe they're just not very intuitive and you're not sure how to use them. But either way, we're going to take a look at these today and hopefully you'll find one that will help you get more out of your Olympus camera. Now I'll be using the M5 Mark III as my base camera, but a lot of these settings will apply to all of the OMDs if they have such features. So let's first take a look at the high-res shot mode. Now to go in the high-res shot mode, as many of you probably already know, you just go into the super control panel and you rotate over until you see the high-res shot mode icon. So you can take a high-res shot, just like so. And then, uh, assuming you're on a tripod, you push the shutter button and take the picture. However, when you have to touch the camera, you may introduce a little bit of shake like this into the camera when you're pushing the shutter button. So what they've incorporated, or what you can do, is set up a delay from the time you push the shutter button before it starts to take the multiple image to develop the high-res shot mode. So the way you do that is actually in shooting control menu, number two, and you go into the high-res shot mode menu. And right here, you can see the default setting is set to zero seconds. So that means it'll automatically take a picture as soon as you hit the shutter button. But you can change this to, you know, a fraction of a second, one second, two seconds, four seconds, all the way up to 30 second delay. And I think for most people, a four second delay is fine. And click OK. Now there's a second line item here in the high-res shot mode, and that's called the flash charge time. And, and as you know, high-res shot mode takes multiple images. I forget if it's eight or 16, but it takes a lot of shots before merging them back together. But you can set the delay between each one of those shots to give your flash time to recycle so it can fire again. And you would just set that here. And I would say, you know, your typical consumer level flash, you need about eight seconds for recycle time on the flash. If you have a lithium powered flash, you know, two seconds is probably pretty safe assuming it's fully charged. But this is an option for you if you're using flash with your high res shot mode, which is uh, not uncommon in say product photography. So now we have a four second delay on the shutter button for high res shot mode. So I'm gonna push the shutter button. The screen will be black until it actually starts to take the picture after four seconds, and then it's done. Now let's talk about the next settings you may have missed. And if you recall, when I was going into high-res shot mode, I had to scroll through several different shutter modes, as you can see, before I got to the high-res shot mode. And you can tell the camera, I don't wanna see all of these different shutter modes. I only use three different shutter modes, so just show me those three instead of making me scroll through everything. So you can do that easily by going into the menu, go down to custom menu, then you want to go down to menu D, and I think of D as for display. And then scroll down to your shutter settings and click OK. And then here you'll see a bunch of check, check boxes that you can turn on and off to tell the camera which shutter modes do you want to see or not see. So, for example, I use silent mode a lot, but I rarely use continuous high or continuous high silent or pro capture high or continuous low, continuous low anti-shock, but I do use continuous low silent and pro capture low, and I rarely use 12 second delay, but I do use the custom timer a lot, but not the standard uh, mechanical shutter custom mode. I normally use the mechanical anti-shock custom mode, so I'll turn that on. And then click the menu button, tap the shutter button. Now when I go into the super control panel, you can see that it only shows the ones that I selected. So high-res shot mode, mechanical shutter, silent shutter, and so on. Now moving on to the next settings you may have missed, and this is very similar to the shutter mode settings we just did, and that has to do with the super control panel and the picture modes. And as you can see, I have to scroll through several picture modes. I have so many options here. And if I click OK, 
you can see them all listed here. There's a dozen or more, probably 15 or 20, that I have to scroll through to get to maybe an art filter that I like or a different uh, picture mode that I like, etc. And you can turn those on and off just like the shutter mode. So we'll go back into the display menu, and we're in the same spot, but we go to picture mode settings. And it also has the same checkboxes. So I never use eye enhance or vivid or muted or portrait, but I do use monochrome. I never use custom or e-portrait. And uh, definitely not underwater or color creator. Uh, sometimes soft art too, sometimes soft focus, but I never use pale light. Granny film too, I'll turn all these off. I do like gentle sepia. I like the dramatic tone too. I'm going to turn all of these off. Sometimes I use the vintage one. Never use partial color or the bleach bypass. Sometimes I use instant film. And that's it. So now when I go into the super control panel, I can scroll quickly to the specific art filters that I want. I don't have to go through all of them, as you can see. It's limited to just the ones that I like to use. Now, moving on to the next setting that you may have missed, and that actually has to do with the entire Super Control Panel itself. Because when we click the Info button, you know, we just have this one Super Control Panel. But we also have different uh, control panels depending on what mode we're in. So, for example, when I go into, say, Art Mode, and I hit the, the uh, Info button, you can see that the Art Menu pops up. However, Let's go back into Aperture Priority, which is my normal mode. And I click and I go into the Super Control Panel. This is all I can do here, which is fine. But then the Super Control Panel itself is blocking the uh, actual uh, scene that I might be taking a picture of. And what you can do is you can click OK again. And of course, it'll go down and move out of the way where you can select and scroll through this way. However, you can select what's called the Live Control Panel. So let's go into the menu and go into Control Settings and click over to the right and go into PASM. And right now you can see that the Live Super Control Panel is the only one checked. But I can also click on Live Control and tap out with the shutter button now when I click the info button, you can see I have the super control panel, but I can toggle over to the live control panel by clicking the info button, like so. And now I have access to the live control panel, which has all of the same settings as the super control panel, but now I'm not blocking whatever I'm taking a picture of when I'm changing the settings. So you may find the Live Control Panel easier to use than the Super Control Panel for different reasons, but it's also very useful in the other modes on your camera. So let's go to uh, Scene Mode, for example. And if I click the OK button, you can see I can select between different scene modes, but that's all. But let's say I'm doing Night Mode, like this, a Nightscape, and I click OK. You'll see that the shutter mode is in just a standard push the button and it takes a picture. But if I'm on a tripod, I may want to add a two or three second delay or custom timer. What I can do is go into the menu, go back to the D menu here, then go in the control settings, go to scene mode, and we can turn on the super control panel like so. And now when I click the OK button, you can see I can toggle between the Scene Mode menu and the Super Control, man, uh, super control Panel. And then I can change my shutter to have a two-second delay. And if there's anything else in here that I can change, I can do it. Some things I cannot change, like the Autofocus Mode, uh, the White Balance is locked, the ISO is locked. But image stabilization is not locked, so I may want to turn that off if I'm on a tripod. I could even change the uh, resolution or the picture quality settings, etc. Uh, picture mode's locked, but you get the idea. 
And of course, you know, we can do the same thing for art mode. We only have these art filters showing up that I selected originally, not all of them. We can go into the same menu. It's menu D, control settings, art, and turn on the live control, let's say in this case. And now when I click the OK button, I can toggle back and forth between live control. So maybe I want to go into silent mode, change my aspect ratio, change my uh, picture quality settings, don't care about video, et cetera, et cetera. I can even change my autofocus modes, but some things you cannot change. But in this case, it looks like I can even change my ISO. And you may have also noticed that we can change the auto mode. So let's say we want to show the super control panel when we're using auto mode. So now let's just put this into auto mode. And normally when you click the super control panel, this is what you get in auto mode. It's just this very generic simplified menu system. But if I hit the info button, I can toggle right over to the super control panel and just go through settings that I can and cannot change. It's very, very limited, but there are some there, right? Now, one other setting you may have missed, or it's a little bit confusing, is something called a quick sleep mode. And what this is designed to do is to maximize your battery life. And you can really, you can probably shoot all day if you're using the quick sleep mode. But let me show you what that is and how it's different from the regular sleep mode. So let's go into the menu and we're in custom menu and we'll just go into the J2 menu and you'll see that by default the sleep mode is set to one minute and we can have the camera automatically go to sleep after one minute, three minutes or five minutes. So we'll leave this at one minute. However, there is a quick sleep mode here and if we go in here and activate this, you'll notice a little arrow here. We'll click over to the right. And we can have the camera turn off the LCD and go to sleep after three seconds. And these, these are independent, but we have a three second, five second, eight second interval. And we have the same here, three second, five, eight, even 30 seconds or one minute. But to maximize battery life, I would set this to three seconds as well. Like so, and then click OK until you see it says on here. Now, I'm gonna wait three seconds and you'll notice that nothing's happened. In fact, this will stay on probably for one minute, uh, draining the battery the whole time. To activate the quick sleep mode, you have, have to actually toggle the EVF. So I'm going to do it with this. On some cameras, it's over here or maybe on the back of the camera. But toggle your EVF button. And while I was explaining that, the camera's already gone to sleep. So let me wake it back up. And what you'll see here is the super control panel with a little green eco uh, icon right there. And that tells you that the camera is in uh, quick sleep mode. So as you can see, it goes up, go to sleep after three seconds and shuts the LCD off. And then to wake it up, you just tap the shutter button and you can, and you can go right back to uh, shooting. And I found this to really extend my battery life quite a bit that I can shoot probably all day with just doing that one thing. Now, I do want to note that when you're using the eco mode, you do lose the use of your live view, and you're going to have to rely on your EVF to uh, frame your uh, images. However, if you do want to use your live view, just simply toggle your EVF button here, and this will take you back to your live view. And then when you're done taking a picture using the live view, you can just toggle back to quick sleep mode, and the camera should just go back to sleep after three seconds. So I hope you found at least one of those settings useful to help you get more out of your Olympus cameras. Uh, you know, if you like these kind of videos, consider subscribing to the channel, hit the like button, maybe buy me a coffee to support the channel. But either way, I appreciate you guys watching and hopefully we'll see you again soon.